While moving about, I've met a few linguists of this land working on a reconstruction of sorts. It's theorized these languages stretch as far back as 4000 BCE. I am writing to you to ask for your help in another reconstruction effort. Yours sincerely, Cornelius Q. Spratt. Oh, goodness. YouTube, welcome back. Hopefully the gods of technology are with us because today we are about to do another historical linguistics challenge. And this is a very special one because we've actually received a letter from a colleague of mine, um, a linguist named Cornelius Q. Spratt. And well, I think we should just jump in and see what the letter says. Let's go over and see just what the letter says. Got to click. Got to do a real nice meaty click. All right. And I will read this in Cornelius's voice. Dear Colin Gorey, I am writing to you for help with a puzzling linguistic conundrum. I have managed to get myself lost in a faraway land with the locals called Heje. While moving about, I have met a few linguists of this land working on a reconstruction of sorts, trying to figure out the historical relations of quite a few languages native to this land. They say its spread is not as far back as other languages, but quite reasonably diverse. Going off writings, it's theorized these languages stretch as far back as 4000 BCE, but phonetic reconstructions have only made it to 2000 BCE, with reference and notoriety of your previous reconstruction of the Ukabnash family, whose descent is found to the southeast of here. I am writing to you to ask for your help in another reconstruction effort. Since you have clearly displayed a familiarity with the environment and surrounding languages thus far, I have included what I gather to be 50 sets of cognates, along with inflected forms coming from about 2000 to 1500 BCE. I wish for you the best in your efforts and may you fare better than I have. Yours sincerely, Cornelius Q. Spratt. Well, goodness. Goodness. Looks like we've got our work cut out for us. And wait, is it real? Is it the elephant? It's back. The elephant is back. Elephant! Let's get some elephants in the chat. Um, all right, so we have a, a new historical linguistics challenge. We've got to jump in um, because it's about to get very, very real. And we've got to help out our, our friend Cornelius. Uh, so let us skedaddle over and let me get, <laughs> let me get the link up. We are back. Okay. Yeah, Lucy's going to have fun. Uh, yeah, I don't understand why my mouse is not clicking. Uh, sometimes I feel like we should go back to, to knotted cords. You know, the time before computers and calculators, we should just go back to knotted cords for keeping tallies of things. That's what we should be doing. All right, so, okay, let's see. Now I'm actually going to look at this. Goodness gracious, we have... <laughs> we have quite a lot. We have quite a lot going on here. Oh, goodness. Okay. How am I going to fit all this on the screen? We we have a lot to do here. This is immensely detailed. Oh, Cornelius wasn't wrong. So, I am taking it to mean that there are... So, here are forms along the side. We have... Forms 1 to 50, although there's, there appear to be um, maybe some repeats, or maybe the, the numbering is, is off. I, there's a blank, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 2, 3, 4. Are these? I'm going to assume that this is meant to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Um, so let me... Sutton! Sutton's in the chat! Yes, okay. Uh, okay, good. So we're up to 1 to 50, the forms along the left, and then on the, the uh, along the top we have, I'm taking it to be a variety of languages with different morphological forms. Okay, this is so good. So we have one language which is, I'm, if, if this is IPA, AIS, with forms one to six. 
first step is always going to be getting our, our, our head around the data. So we have a different language here and um, forms one to six. And then we have a different language here, Sarece, forms one to two, Sherish, I'm guessing one to two, Seriki, one to five. And then there's also the uh, <laughs> our previous work on um, on Proto Ukapnash. Okay. All right. So let's take a look. What is going on here? So because we have re uh, because we have inflected forms, we have the opportunity to do some internal reconstruction, where seeming irregularities in uh, morphologically related forms can be can be traced back to once um, once regular forms that have gone through some contextual changes. So, where are we going to start? Goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. Let's see if we can find something, something relatively small. Okay, so we have, I wonder if it might be worthwhile comparing form one with form one. Now, we can't be sure that the uh, that form ones are equivalent in each language but uh, it might be a, a hypothesis that we can explore galactic says to start with ais okay and is it ais is this a, an ipa j a yod okay ais so what we have here kukuo farmer ah okay this looks promising we have kukuo, or kukuo, and kokhu, kokhu, farmer. Let's see what else we have. So I'm going to make a little, hmm, I'm going to make a new window. We're going to just write down our notes. All right, chat, let's do this. Okay, so we have, as a potential starting point, we have a yeast one, Akukuo, meaning farmer, and we have, what is this language? What is this language called? Mm. Not sure how to pronounce this. Lesarzi? Are those schwas? Lesarzi? Not sure. And we need to get the farmer in here. Kokhu. So this means farmer, farmer, good. Okay, what else do we have? We have a word that means bee. Interesting. Kuku. So this is saretse one. And I'm taking it that these are reconstructed forms themselves, um, given the, the asterisk that precedes them. That's interesting. Saretse. Ah, saretse and I have to zoom. I can't zoom in on the phone. Uh Sherish. Sherish. Cherish. Cool. So, let's take a look at this form as a, a way to start. So we have um, meanings as well: gardener, b b, farmer farmer. Um, and so we also are going to be able to do some work reconstructing uh, meanings. And off the top of my head, I'm guessing that the direction of uh, reconstruction would be something like uh, gardener as the original uh, going to be because bees go out in gardens and as a horticultural society became an agricultural society the word for gardener could be extended to the word for farmer so that would be my reconstruction um, so far that's tentative but so let's say gardener tentatively everything's tentative of course and then what do we have here we have um, initial K across the board. So we can reconstruct initial K. Then we have U, O, U, U, AU. And uh, my instinct would be that um, the vowel kind of in between all of these would be U, because we could have U diphthongizing to AU, like in the great vowel shift in English. Um, and then we could have lowering in uh, Lasarazi, I'm assuming. 
that would be my first guess. So cool. And then what else do we have? We have this difference between KW, this uh, affricate here, K, K, although there's actually a WK here, and well, a K. If we're accounting for the ow as a diphthongization of oo, then perhaps then perhaps we don't need to account for that oo here. That's uh, something I'm not totally sure on. All right, so given this, it looks like the easiest um, the easiest way to reconstruct would be to to put in qua, as well as final stress, which is shared by everything. Then we have this final vowel, which is a long o in Ais, an U in La Sarrezi, an U in uh, Sarretze, and an O in Sherish, and in Seriki, which I'm assuming is some sort of a, um, an orthographic transcription rather than a phonological one, like a, uh, a transcription of something that's not entirely alphabetical, I'm guessing. We have a pole. So let's be a bit more systematic here. We have our correspondent sets. The writing system is included. Okay, so I think I need to take a look at this. So this is what we have as correspondences. And given that, I am tentatively reconstructing. So this is the recon. I'm tentatively reconstructing K, U, Qua, and here, here I think we need something different from this U. What are our options? Well, we could do an O, which raises to U in these two languages, but then we would have an U that lowers to A and an O that raises to U, which seems a bit odd, unless it's some sort of a positional um, rule where final things, final vowels are neutralized. If it's, if it's, if that's the kind of thing, then I'm very confident uh, reconstructing kukuo. kukuo. So what rules do we need in order to make this work? Uh, we need to say vowels, I'm making this a more general rule than it's technically necessary, but vowels lengthen in word final position this is my hypothesis here. Um, for the sarrezi, I'm guessing that u lowers to o, u lowers to o, and o raises to u in word final position. I'm going to use word final position as my get out of jail free card here. It could be uh, completely invalidated by the next uh, the next data we find, but we got to start somewhere, right? Uh, and what else is needed here? We need qua to become k. As I do this, another hypothesis occurs to me, which is maybe instead of qua becoming k, k becomes k, and wo becomes u. That's possible. That's possible. However, the fact if if the sarzi and sa, uh, saret Saretze are related, then this will perhaps run into some trouble because we're going to move. Well, it all depends on the ordering of the rules, I suppose. But we're going to move this w into the first syllable in Saretze. Um, no, I have not seen a writing system tab. I've only seen. Let's. Uh, let me just finish this train of thought and then I'll go and look. Um, so given that, I'm going to leave this as is for now. Uh, okay, let's take a look at that writing system tab. I see historical reconstruction, theoretical reconstruction. Ah, that is the writing system tab. Interesting. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I think we're gonna, need a, we're gonna need a sequel to this. This is, okay, so Rhotic, Fricative, stop, nasal, labial, coronal. So this is presumably what the onset consonant is. 
And then there are different graphemes used for these. Wow, okay. This could be helpful. This could be very helpful. I almost feel like I'm reconstructing old Chinese here. Okay, so then let's take a look at that. Where did that form go? Where is our farmer? Okay, so we have the writing system evidence. Ku for ko. So, all right. Let's see. So this is more evidence. Let's go back here for a second. So am I to understand that the writing system is the same for all of these varieties? Except for Seriki, which has a different one? I will, uh, I will wait the chat's uh, illumination. So back to the worksheet, we have this writing, which if we look at this, so CU, perhaps CU and CO are going to be in this dorsal stop initial series. So, so far, so good. So far, so good. Okay, let's go back to the worksheet. Let's see what else we can do here. So let's continue our rules. And let's, what do we need to get gu gu from gu guo? Uh, well, we need to share this rule. We need metathesis for our kw to go to wk. Let's give ourselves some more space. And that's it. So I'm going to keep these on the same row. Uh, and then let's do Sherich. Uh, so this is Coco. So here we have, um, here we have U lowering to U and, and W being dropped after K. And maybe we can break out this rule so that we can see the shared innovation between the Sarrezi and Sharish. So, so first W, first we lose W after K, and then K affricates in a stressed environment. Let's, let's just say plus stress. Not the cleanest way of representing it, but needs must. Okay. Uh, let's see what is next. So this will get us this will get us everything for Sharish. And then for Seriki, we need to we either need to lose the W like we did for these other languages and diphthongize the U. Or this ow diphthong is equivalent to this. The, the U of this diphthong here is equivalent to this W here. Not sh not certain of that. Yeah. Okay. So Lucy's giving me the signal to keep uh, to keep going despite difficulties. Hang in there. Persevere. And uh, I will do that. Okay. So it looks like we have a few uh, hypotheses here. Let's take a look at another form, and we will see. Uh, we will see what we get. Notice that this is so far consistent with the writing system, which gives us something like ku, something like ku ko. Um, we don't know about the vowels, we just know that they're different. Um, but the consonants are something like the same. And in our reconstruction, the consonants are something like the same and the vowels are different. So as far as I'm concerned, the writing system evidence is consistent with this reconstruction. All right. The idea is that we don't want to we don't want to have a reconstruction that that implies that the writing system doesn't make sense. So we have this assumption, which is a hypothesis, that the writing system matches the synchronic phonology of the reconstructed language. This hypothesis could be incorrect, but it's as good as we're going to get, I think, at this point. Uh, and this is true when you do reconstructions of uh, of of real world languages that have um, that have historical writing systems. So you have to be able to uh, find a way to relate the writing system data to the linguistic data. And it's not always straightforward, especially when you're dealing with non-alphabetic writing systems. Um, although even with alphabetic writing systems, it's not straightforward. Okay, let's look at the data again. So we have, we have some more morphology to look at. Okay, so we have 
a dual and a plural form for for farmer here. So let's take a look at that. Uh, and this is probably going to change our um, our reconstruction in some way. So let's take a, take a look at the dual form, two farmers. So let's scoot over back, thinking how I can represent this. Maybe I should put the semantic data to the side so we have enough room. So we have farmer here. I'm going to reconstruct gardener tentatively. Farmer, farmer, B galactic sand, thank you so much. Okay. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent chat. Um, okay, so then let's get the new form in here. We have kukuoko, kukuoko, rather, two farmers. And we have <laughs> jayu, two farmers, interesting. And let's see what else we have. Okay, we don't have a dual plural distinction in um, Saretse and Shorish, but we do in Seriki. So let's use that. Right. And so we have here two gardeners, if I'm not correct, if I'm not mistaken, two gardeners. Okay, so we have some dual forms here. Let's see what else we have. So then the question is, what's going on with Saretse and Shorish. Do we take these uh, plural forms as analogous to the plural forms of Ais and the Sarrezi? Or do we take them as analogous to the dual forms? Because that could have happened. They could have merged in favor of the dual or the plural. So let's bring in the plural uh, morphology as well at the same time so we can make the decision where what we're going to align with what. All right. So plural. Farmers, Jaha, I can tell we're going to have some, some trouble with this one. <laughs> Fun. And then let's take a look at, interesting, we have two, whoops, we have two forms, meaning gardeners. Well, this is something interesting. Now, what exactly is going on with these uh, plurals? Gard the nerds, right? Yeah. That looks wrong to me, but it's correct. Um, gardeners. And then a second one. Gardeners. And maybe we will find out that some of these are not actually cognate, uh, morphologically speaking. So then let's take a look at the plural of sh uh, Sherish. Sherish. What? Where do you belong? Kokok. Hmm. Perhaps here, or perhaps here. Unknown. Oh, no. Oops, sorry, that should be Sherish. And we'll go back. We have Kukwa bees. So this makes me believe that that the Seretse form is cognate with the, I'll call this plural two, in Seriki. Although Kukok could be cognate with either the dual form in Siriki or the plural form in Siriki. Unknown. And then what's going on here? Kukogol. Voiced lateral fricative. Something that I am not good at making on the first attempt. You know, Satin. Uh, points out that it's possible that we have poor translations. And of course, I would never suggest that my esteemed colleague has collected uh, data which are in any way problematic. Um, as we always say at the start of papers, any mistakes are my own. But uh, it's always possible that there is some loss of fidelity uh, as data gets transmitted from one source to, uh, to another. So we have to keep that in mind. There's always a, a level of, of question, a level of, of, of uncertainty that we have to... Uh, approach this with. So let's take a look and try and understand what's going on with the plural form of ayis. So we have this gol suffix. Where could this have come from? It doesn't look like it's 
a great candidate to be cognate with the plural to in seriki, but I could understand how it might be cognate with the plural one if we had simply lost the coda. So kuo go, ignoring the coda consonant there, kukao, kukao, kao kao, sorry, kao kao. Hmm, no. No, I don't know. I, I, I take back what I just said. I don't think it's a good match for this. I think it's a better match for plural two. So this is going to be my operative assumption at the moment. And then what in heaven's name is going on in Lasarezi? Jayu Jaha. This looks like suppletion to me. Um, I don't see I don't see a good way for these to have arisen from the same source. So I'm going to mark them as suppletive forms uh, with their own history. So they are going to get their own rows. And we can speculate about what they, where they may have come from. All right, let's just take a look and see where this puts us. Uh, set it, oh, I forgot something for Sarece. This is just bees. Okay, so we have this question mark as to where, where this kukok form belongs, what row it belongs in. Let's take the Ais and uh, Seriki forms and, oh, and let's also get the, uh, we don't have a good writing, we don't have much in the way of writing system other than for Seriki where we have an orthographic form for each of the different morphological forms. So let's, let's bring that in. Uh, all right, let's bring this in. So, Kauko. That belongs here, and this belongs here. So recon, meaning, or let's say gloss, and orthography, gloss, and then we have our orthography. So let's fill in the um, the orthographic reconstruction of Seriki. So we have kaukoko, we have kaukoka, sorry, kaukoa. And then we have Kauko Ko 3 Ah. Interesting. Okay. Be chill, be water. Wisdom from Quain. Wisdom from Quain. Okay, so let's see what we're going to do with our with our dual form here. So I want to reconstruct Kuquo. I want to I then have a question about what's going on with this long vowel because the rule that that I had proposed does not work because the vowel is no longer word final in kukuoko. Uh, so we need to we need to revise this instead of uh, a word final environment for this vowel length thing. We have two options. We can either have an original long vowel with vowel shortening everywhere else, or we could have a rule that lengthens uh, open syllables, say, in stressed environments. That could work. Uh, we don't have enough data to say for now. So let's, I think the, the least um, obtrusive change would be to change the lengthening rule to be um, in stressed environments and then uh, with a syllable boundary right after. Yeah, how, how to notate that in a way that can be visible on stream. Let's say, I'm just gonna put a dollar sign in here for syllable boundary. Normally what I would do is a small subscript sigma to the left of a, a right bracket, but uh, yeah. And plus stress is not something that you'll generally see in most uh, modern phonology. Um, phonological theories, but I gotta fit this on one line somehow. Okay, so good. So now we've saved our reconstruction uh, and now we have something else. So we have to decide what our data is. Let's assume that the sharish is not in play for now. So we have k and k. 
Um, so then that will give us Kukwok, even if the Shurish were in the Shurish were in play, it would still be okay. So I think we're good there. And then what's next? We have O and O. Uh, we've had O before. We've had O before. So, sorry, let me, uh, let me, the, the dream's not lagging, my brain is lagging. We've had O before in Seriki, which corresponds to our reconstructed O. So it looks like we may have a merger in city of O and O. That's one option at least. Otherwise, we can um, we can treat this O O uh, alternation as an allophonic alternation. I'm not sure exactly what we want to do. Simplest uh, answer first. I think we will will reconstruct a quality distinction into the proto language. And one thing that leads me down this road is if we look at the writing system, we see a lot of different ways of writing CO. Now we have to take this with a huge grain of salt. We don't know what these, you know, this is someone else's analysis, uh, but it's at least, it at least tempts me to believe that there are a variety, of, there's a reason why all these things that are hypothesized to be dorsal stops are written differently. And, in the writing system. And one of those things might be vowel quality distinctions. One might be presence or absence of a coda. One might be phonation differences on the initial um, vowel length, you know, all sorts of different reasons, but at least vowel quality is one. And so this is something that we have another, it's just another reason why we might want to propose that. So if that's the case, then we need to have a rule that takes us from all to all and let's just say it applies everywhere, which it may very well not. All right, so then we have kukuo, kukuoko, kukuoko, gardener plus duo. And let's put in the morphine boundary there. All right, that's cool. And I think that's a, a reasonable breaking point. Um, <laughs> uh, don't say breaking point, that tempts fate. Um, let's go back to the full screen webcam and say goodbye to YouTube for now. YouTube, thank you for joining us. Historical linguistics challenges are always a lot of fun. Um, apologies about the uh, 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 stream lag issues. Hopefully this doesn't make it into the recording. But uh, I thank you all for joining me today and come back and we will do some more.